Okay, now we're on episode eight. So today we're going to sort out the stalling issue. This is what we're looking like at the moment. It was 1973 GMC RV. We've got some more gutting done. The first thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to take this panel off and I'm going to look inside the fuel tank and see what the fuel looks like and see if it's full. Uh, the gauges are reading full. I did add about 15 gallons of gas to it one of the first days that I saw it um, because the guy had it running and the gas smelled really bad so I tried to dilute a bit. So let's start by opening that up and we're going to work our way back here today. We're going to change our wire to our distributor. Uh, it's going to be a direct heavy gauge wire going uh, powering that. So we're going to eliminate that. We're going to put a fuel filter in the carburetor. We're going to move the fuel line around so that it uh, doesn't get so hot to eliminate vapor lock. I've got a nice proper right angle adapter today. So let's see what happens. First, let's take this off and get this cover off and look in the, that tank. All right, we've got this open. So I don't know if anybody remembers the movie Sling Blade, but in that movie, Carl's fixing various lawnmowers and they bring a lawnmower and they can't start. And Carl deduces that there ain't no gas in it. And what we can see in here is there's barely any gas in it. Mm -hmm. So also this is frozen. So our full tank reading was incorrect. So I'm glad we looked in here and I don't know if I'm going to order new very expensive ones of these or I might be able to maybe spray the crap out of that and get it working again. Um, we're going to find out shortly. Uh, I think I'm going to open the front one as well and just compare the condition of that to this one and also the fuel level. The, the tank does not look terrible. Um, I stuck a screwdriver down in there and stirred it around. There's not a bunch of stuff breaking loose so you know, I think with a sock on here, that's clear, by the way. I mean, it is drawing fuel out of there, so I guess we're going to work with that for now. Uh, let's uh, open the other tank. This is tank two. I dropped one of the um, hose clamps in there, and the gas is barely above that. That tank looks a little nasty inside, but again, there's some black in there, so I'll put a screwdriver in there and... That's going to be a thing. So anyway, but it uh, looks like our problem is no gas in the tanks. Okay, good news and the bad news. Bad news is, is I got to drop these tanks and there's crap inside and I don't think they're ruined, but they definitely need to be cleaned. Um, the good news is, is that once we ground our these things seem to work reverse. Once they're grounded, that's when it's empty. So you have, and then when I switch to my auxiliary tank, which is in the front, we go down, which is fantastic. So that's working there. So now I'm gonna go to the front tank, which is still reading full. And we're gonna ground that and then come back and see what happens. All right, so that's our main tank. And that's uh, slowly going down to empty, so that's good. So at least our wiring um, to our tanks, sending units is good. It looks like I'm going to spend some dough and uh, order some sending units and drop these tanks and buy a fresh selector valve and just, you know, do the whole thing, put the hoses in, screw it, you know, get the... Um, uh the filler necks all that stuff so what the hell you know you only have to do it once if you do it right so the best laid plans go awry 
I got other stuff I can do on the interior. I'm gonna jack this thing up. It's gonna sit in front of my garage for a week or two, however long it takes me to get these tanks out and get them clean and get the new sending units and put them back in. And um, But, you know, as much as I wish there was a way around it, there's not. So I'm just gonna spend the dough, have it done right, and then that's one less thing I have to worry about. And that'll be all wrapped up. Hopefully that'll cure the stalling problem. And I'll save myself some time messing around with that. So we'll see what happens. So right now I'm going to jack this thing up. And I'm going to begin to remove the fuel tanks. Okay. Step one for removing tanks. First, order two tank sending units. Order two O-rings. Order the original style tank kit early style tank kit so we know all our parts are on the way then uh step two is this i am very lucky so i was able to remove the fuel lines from the top of the tank and remove the fuel sending units from the top of the tank because i have these holes this is how i was running it to move it around starting with the front tank first Lubricate these. Then there's our fill right there. That thing. I'm going to loosen this, and I bet you when I drop it, if this is a pain in the butt, I'll cut it. But my guess is that uh, it'll just pop right out of there because it's so hard, and I've ordered new ones of those. So let's see what happens. Uh, let's take these out back here, too. take these three out that'll drop that piece off okay so now I'm letting the tank drop towards me um, I've got it on my jack but this way I can pull it this direction off of the uh, filler tube over there and then hopefully drop it down all right that was pretty damn smooth and so I just got to get this uh, vent line off of here and then we are uh on to the next one i'll pull this out okay still no surprises that's one of them out uh pretty quick so now i'm gonna get the other one out same procedure it looks like you definitely have to remove the front one first so you can get those uh there's a l bracket you got to get off okay and i this one i put the um bucket under where the filler hose is uh, just so when it would drop the tank would be at an angle and the fuel would be down here I can also see there's a vent line there I'm gonna need to take care of but uh, this one's coming out just as easy as the other one so I'm gonna go grab my pliers and wiggle that back and forth and pop that uh, filler line off and then uh, we'll get the vent line off and slide this one out all right so I just cut the line that goes to the generator up there because this is this is definitely the original line it's kind of hard and brittle uh i took the uh vent off now we're going to slide this tank out and there you have it so here's what's interesting about this i was so happy when i found those holes drilled in the floor now that did make it easier for dropping the tanks if i would have had all those extra lines on there it might have made it a little trickier so it saved me a few minutes there but if it wasn't for all this filming and blabbing and of course putting tools down and not knowing what i did with them that's maybe a 40 minute job very easy very quick i was dreading it and now it's done now i can have those cleaned there is definitely some slime in them but when i rub it it comes off and i've got metal underneath so i think i caught them just in time and uh, I'll take them to the tank shop and they'll dip them. I mean, it's like a radiator shop and hopefully they'll come out all decent inside or certainly usable. And then uh, that'll be one less thing to worry about. I can paint them and then if I ever decide to sell the coach, I can say, hey man, you got, you know, clean tanks and new sending units. So pretty cool. And then this is the, that's the fuel line for the generator. So 
it's when we, yeah. It's definitely time to replace that. But you know what, it lasted 50 years, so good, good job, hose. Okay, so now these tanks are emptied. Uh, there was some gas that came out pretty clean, so I put about four gallons in my mower, and the other four gallons was nasty, and I put that to be taken to uh, re be recycled. So there's the two tanks, scale to one to 10. That job's like a four. It's not that difficult, and it happened quick, so if you've got one of these, you can definitely do this. This is not a big deal. So anyway, that's going to be the end of this episode. Uh, probably be a little while before the next one because I'm gonna next one's gonna be putting all this crap back in um, So that's it, uh, and I'm gonna do some interior work. I've got some nice Birch plywood. I got to get out of here I take this wood out and I'm gonna start rebuilding some sec that whole area in the rear uh, I much prefer carpentry to mechanical stuff. So we're gonna make some neat uh, make that rear bed area really nice so uh, that'll maybe I'll have one of those videos in between now and the gas tank one. So uh, that's it. Thanks.